Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of physics, we shall discuss the mechanical properties of fluids. So in the last session, we have discussed the mechanical properties of solids. So in this session, we shall discuss the mechanical properties of fluids. So what are fluids actually? Fluids involve both liquids and gases. Don't think fluid means only liquid or only gases. Okay, so we shall discuss how the fluids will be behave at different conditions. Okay. So are you ready? Let's get started. So first we shall discuss the mechanical properties of fluids. So first I have already told you fluids means that they involve both liquids as well as gases, right? So how are fluids different from glass, solids and what is common in liquids and gases? First we shall see their differences. Okay, so unlike a solid, fluid has no definite shape. Solid has a shape, but fluids doesn't have shape, right? Remember this. So solids and liquids have a fixed volume, whereas gas fills the entire volume of its container. So solids and liquids have a fixed volume, but gases have no fixed volume they will get filled up in the entire container right we already discussed in the uh, matter topic so next mechanical properties of fluids the volume of solid liquid or gas depends on the stress or pressure acting on it so suppose there is a liquid or gas so how they will behave because of the pressure which is acting on them Remember this. And the difference between gases and solids or liquids is that for solids and liquids the change in volume is due to change of external pressure is rather small. But in other words solids and liquids have much lower compressibility than gases. I have already told you gases have more compressibility than liquids than solids. So solids are very less compressible mediumly compressible are liquids and very high compressibility is possessed by gases okay so next pressure so what is pressure pressure is nothing but it is a force acting per unit area newton per meter square and it is a scalar right the one newton per meter square is a pascal and what is density so density is nothing but it is a mass which occupies a unit volume mass is occupying a unit volume this is the volume right so mass per unit volume is nothing but density rho and it is a scalar and it has a unit of kg per sorry meter cube this should be meter cube right volume has meter cube right so kg per meter cube is a unit of density right so moving on the sum of the densities what is the density of water density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube right suppose if my density is less i will float on water if my density is more i will not float on water human beings density is more than water so they will not float on water wood has density less than water so it will float on water how much is of sea water same thing mercury has 13.6 uh, into 10 power 3 that is uh, 1000 ethyl alcohol 0. 0.8 whole blood so blood is very important blood has density of 1.06 into 10 power 3 by meter cube okay kg per meter cube right so almost same with that of water and air has 1.29 somewhat more and oxygen has 1.43 hydrogen has 9.0 into 10 power minus 2 very less space has 10 power minus 20 okay if you see here uh, which one has highest which one has highest um, we can say here we uh, mercury has 13.6 into 10 cube kg per meter cube it has higher density because it has high viscosity high density okay the particle size is larger compared to water okay next what is viscosity what is viscosity the degree to which a fluid resists flow under an applied force suppose if I take a water Tell me which has highest if I take oil this viscosity is less and here the viscosity is more 
Why? Because the resistance by oil to any pressure or force is higher than the water. So for example, liquids like water, alcohol, petrol and more others flow more freely and faster than glycerin, honey or oil. These are high viscous liquids than other liquids. Okay. So the unit of viscosity is Pascal second. Right. 1 pascal second is equals to 1 poise. Okay, the viscosity is calculated in terms of diff coefficient of viscosity. The coefficient of viscosity of fluids will be decreased as the temperature increases. So, coefficient of viscosity we can say is inversely proportional to temperature. So as temperature increases coefficient of viscosity decreases. Obviously honey will lose its viscosity when I heat it right because it will become uh, like waterish right. So why again it is inverse in case of gases right. This is for liquids. For gases they are directly proportional. Okay clear with this about viscosity. Viscosity is nothing but I can say it is a fluid which the degree to which a fluid resists flow under an applied force. Okay. Moving on to buoyancy. So mechanical properties of fluids the buoyancy is very important. What is buoyancy? Suppose there is a beaker containing of water. I have kept a wood piece here. Suppose I apply a force F, right? Does it go downward easily? No, because there will be some force which will be applying uh, by the water which is resisting the force F. That Fn is called as force of buoyancy. Okay, so what is this force? Okay, first we shall see what is this buoyancy. Okay, so first what is this buoyancy? Whenever a body is immersed in a liquid, partly or wholly, it experiences an upward force called buoyant force. I have already told you if I place a body on water, the buoyantic force will be pushing that body against the gravity, right? So when the density of an object placed on a liquid is less than the density of the liquid, it floats else sinks. I have already told you density of the object. must be less than the density of liquid then it floats else if the density is more the body will sink right clear with this so if the density is less than that of liquid it will float if the density is more than that of liquid it will sink right human beings have more density than the liquid like water that's why they will not float on water they will sink in water Okay, moving on to Archimedes principle, the very important principle regarding biontic force. So what is this Archimedes principle? If the weight of the water displaced is less than the weight of the object, the object will sink, the same thing. Otherwise the object will float with the weight of the water displaced equal to the weight of the object. If the weight of the water displaced is less than the weight of the object, suppose I am keep, keeping 10 kg of weight on water. So the weight of the water displaced is less than the 10 kgs, it will sink. If the weight of the water displaced is equal to the weight of the object, it will float. Clear with this? Here it will sink because the weight of the object is more than that of the weight of the water. So that means here the density is more, that's why the body is sinking. If the density is less than that of the water, it will float. I've already told you this is the Archimedic principle. When the object is floating, the water displaced will be equal to the water weight of the object. Clear? Moving on to streamline flow or laminar flow and I'll, we will see what is turbulent flow also. What is the streamline flow? So it is a uniform flow of a fluid. So suppose a fluid is flowing in a pipe. So this uniform flow is called as streamline flow. Okay. So every particle follows its preceding one. Mass of the liquid entering in a tube is equal to the mass of the leaving 
Suppose this is the entry of the pipe and this is the exit of the pipe. The mass of the liquid entering the tube is same at the end and the steady flow is achieved only at low flow speeds, not at high flow speeds. Next, what is turbulent flow? So beyond a limiting value called critical speed, this flow loses steadiness and becomes turbulent. Then what is this turbulent flow? If I take the same pipe, this will be the turbulent flow. So there is no uniformity right and becomes turbulent the velocity of the particle crossing any particular point of the liquid is not constant in both magnitude and direction hope you understand what is the difference between streamline flow and turbulent flow okay so this is the laminar flow or streamline flow and this is the turbulent flow okay hope you got the difference next Regarding the mechanical properties of fluids, Bernoulli's principle and theorem are very important. What is this Bernoulli's principle? Okay, so he states that an increase in the speed of fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or decrease in the fluid's potential energy. Okay, so speed will increase. When the speed increases, there will be lesser pressure. So this is a very basic for yellow planes all this so whenever there is a suppose this is there is an aeroplane here okay so if there is low pressure here and if there is a high pressure so the body will take its lift so this is a very basic principle of Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's principle right so increase in speed is associated with decrease in pressure okay so what is this Bernoulli's theorem so when a non-viscous fluid flows between two points, the sum of the pressure energy, potential energy, kinetic energy per unit of the volume is always constant. So this is following we can say, can I say conservation of energy? Yes. So he says energy is constant, it is neither created nor destroyed. Spinning motion of a ball, aerodynamic lift, all are explained by Bernoulli's theorem and Bernoulli's principle. Okay, we can see on the diagram. So, conservation of energy, pressure energy, kinetic energy, potential energy at the first stage is equal to the second stage, right? Clear with this? So, reduction in pressure is associated with increase in speed, or increase in speed is associated with reduction in pressure. Okay, clear with this? Moving on to surface tension. So regarding fluids, we have surface tension. This is not possessed by solid. This is not available for solids. So what is the surface tension? It is a force acting on the surface of the liquid per unit on its either side. Okay. So as it is seen in liquids, because they have free surfaces and gases don't have free surfaces. So surface tension is mostly seen in liquids. Solids we can't even see surface tension because they have free surfaces because the molecules are at, at least somewhat loosely packed okay and surface tension is equals to force per unit length and that um, unit of surface tension is newton per meter then what are the basic examples of surface tension these are asked in examinations oil and water they will not mix because of surface tension of water and the oil and uh, because of the adhesive forces. Next, water wets you and me but doesn't wet ducks, right? Because of the surface tension between them. Mercury does not wet glass but water sticks to it, right? Whenever I see in a thermometer, mercury will be flowing from one place to another but it will not wet the glass. We have a glass bulb thermometer but when I apply water to mercury, they both will get mixed because of surface tension. So hairs of a paintbrush do not cling together when dry and even when dipped in water but form a fine tip when taken out of it. When I keep the hairbrush in water, right, it will not get uh, cling to each other but when I take it out of the water, they will get cling to each other because of surface tension, right. So these are some of the examples, you have to remember these examples regarding surface tension. They will say oil and water do not mix because of, so this is of surface tension. So area in surface area increases, so that's why they will not mix, okay. 
So next, what is the angle of contact? This is very important how the detergents work on clothes. These are explained by angle of contact. So the angle between the tangent to the liquid surface at the point of contact and the solid surface inside the liquid. Suppose there is a solid here. So I am pouring a drop of liquid here. Right. So the angle between the tangent to the liquid surface and at the point of contact. Okay, that is called angle of contact. Wetting agents decrease the angle of contact that is detergents. So wetting agents means they go and wet the solid. Suppose a cloth is there. Right. So if I pour water, they will decrease the angle of contact. Non-wetting agents increase the angle of contact like raincoats, plastics. They water doesn't get mixed with them right so next is capillary these are asked mostly in the examinations how the inks comes into the pen all these are asked why what is the reason for it the basic reason is capillarity so ca what is capillarity the rise or fall of a liquid in a capillary tube so this is a tube this is a liquid so the rise and fall, suppose it is rising or falling in the capillary tube, this is called capillarity. So best examples are ink absorbed by the pen. So generally this happens because of pressure difference. See air moves from one place to another because of pressure difference, higher pressure to lower pressure. So here also because of pressure difference created, the ink will move from one place to another leaves absorbing water from roots yes this will happen because of capillarity only oil raised in a wick in a lamp water absorbed by a towel so all these are very best examples of capillarity where the water level or the liquid or fluid level rises or falls because of capillarity that is because of pressure difference okay so hope you have learned enough things in this topic called mechanical properties of fluids. We will meet in the next sessions. Thank you so much.